laboratory, laboratory, laboratory work. Love to do work in my laboratory. Science, science, science. Blah, blah, blah. Huh? What? Who are you? Oh, Dr. Moody. I'm so sorry to interrupt. You I was did. just looking for a quiet place to practice. I didn't mean to disturb you. No, it's okay. Well, you totally did. But, <laughs> well, I was actually going to uh, do a little experiment. But... I seem to have lost my lab assistant again. Mm. Well, I can replace them with you. I would be honored. I'm a big fan. Well, it's nice to meet you, little boy. I'm Nick. Nice to meet you, Nicholas. <laughs> well, this is the part where I usually say hello, boys and girls, and all of that. Um, Trevor, roll opening cue. All right, rolling in three, two. Hello, boys and girls, it's me, Dr. Moody. Welcome back to Creation Laboratory, where science and the Bible work together to illustrate truths of our marvelous creator. Today we have Nick with us today. He kind of just invited himself in, and he's going to be the assistant. Well, I'd like to introduce him to you. He is the worship leader here at Calvary Chapel Golden Springs. Say hello, Nick. Hi, everybody. Well, we have a very, very interesting lesson today. So why don't we get started? Nick, please tell the children at home what they'll need for the experiment today. Absolutely. You will need one candle, one lighter, an empty balloon, a balloon full of water, oven mitts, and safety goggles. Yes, it's always important to use proper safety equipment when conducting experiments, especially when working with fire. Don't forget that you must always have an adult assist you. Well, Nick, shall we get started? Absolutely. Very well. Let's start by filling up the empty balloon with air. From from me? Yes. Okay. Would you want me to do it? You're the assistant. I don't do any work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. Clearly. You're a singer. You're supposed to have a lot of air in those lungs. Is this full enough? Yeah, it's all right or whatever. <clears throat> Anyways, very good. <laughs> Go ahead and tie off the balloon so the air can't escape. I haven't done this in ages. It shows. <laughs> this is difficult. Wait, hold on. I gotta try one more time. Okay, two more times. You know what they say. Fifth time's the charm. <laughs> All right, here it is. Oh, very good. Well, thanks, Nick. All right. Now, as you know, before we conduct our experiment, we always come up with our hypothesis. Mm. In a moment, we are going to place the balloon filled with air over our flame. What do you think will happen when we put that on? <clears throat> I think it'll pop. Ah, well, yes. Probably, maybe, I don't know. <clears throat> Boys and girls at home, what's your hypothesis? Well, Nick... Let's test our hypothesis. Go ahead and light our candle, and then you can put on your oven mitts. Take your time. You know, I do all the baking at home. Ah. Okay, I'm ready. All right, so what I want you to do is hold the balloon above the flame and slowly bring it down until it touches the flame. <laughs> ah, yes! <laughs> Wonderful! No surprise there. The balloon popped as soon as it got near the flame, didn't it? So, we're correcting our initial hypothesis. And what about you at home? Were you correcting your hypothesis? Well, let's try one more experiment then. Let's see what happens to a balloon filled with water when it's placed over the flame. Well, Nick, you were spot on with your first hypothesis. What do you think will happen with this second balloon? I think the balloon will burn and the water will fall down and get us all wet. Well, I certainly hope not. <laughs> Boys and girls, have you made your second hypothesis? Very well. Let's see if we're correct. If your candle went out after the first experiment, now is the time to relight it. Oh, 
almost. Ah, perfect. Okay, Nick, are you ready for a bath? I'm ready. All right, well, let's see what happens. Go ahead and hold the balloon over the flame just like you did in the last experiment. Closer. 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 Steady. It's touching. Would you look at that? The balloon did not break. Remarkable. Nick, you can stop now. Okay. Well, this reminds me of a passage of scripture found in the book of Isaiah. God speaks through the prophet of the nation of Israel, and in chapter 43, verse 2, he tells them, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. God encourages his people, reminding them that he will be with them through any difficulty they may face, and that he is able to protect them from harm. Sometimes God does this quite literally, like with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Do you remember that story, Nick? I do. What happened? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were asked to bow down to a god who wasn't the true and living god, and King Nebuchadnezzar got so angry that he decided to place them in his fiery furnace. Wow, and they all burned up? No. Ah. God was with them, and they weren't burned and there was not even the smell of burn on them. So was it just the three of them in the fire? No, there was a fourth in the fire. God was with them. Ah, oh, perfect. So, while God is fully capable of physically protecting us from harm, the passage in Isaiah is really a picture to describe the spiritual trials and difficulties. God says that he will be with us and will carry us through, even when the situation seems hopeless. He is able to give us victory, in our experiment, the balloon represents us, and the flame represents the trials we go through. The water represents God's presence in our lives. With him, we're able to endure any trial we may face. I think it's important to note that God does not prevent trials from entering our lives, but he does promise to be with us even through the worst of times. This is mentioned throughout the Bible. For example, in Psalm 23, 4, David says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. God will never abandon us in our time of need. Jesus himself encourages his disciples before his death and his resurrection. He says in John 16, 33, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So, what is our conclusion? We can be sure that we will face many difficulties in our lives, but we can be just as sure that God will be with us during these times, and he will help us to overcome them. Well, Nick, it's been a pleasure to have you assist me today. Oh, the pleasure's all mine, Dr. Even, Moody. Even though you did kind of just wander into my lab. <laughs> well, and it's also been a great pleasure to have you with us, boys and girls. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and be sure to send us your videos of you and a parent performing any of our experiments on Instagram, tagged at CCGS Kids. Until next time, goodbye! Bye! Oh no! <laughs>